What I want to talk to you about today, whoa, hey, come on, ha, hey, come on. What I want to talk to you today is, is five lures and five techniques to break down open water bass fishing. Open water, cold water bass fishing. Early in the year, I spend a lot of my time in very open water to catch my fish. And I want to give you about five different ways that I try to catch the fish. And one of them is a jerk bait. <laughs> And uh, he come off. That fish came off. Isn't that something? Two in a row that I've lost. One of them is a jerk bait, and it's one of the very best baits that you can use to catch your fish early in the year. And what I like to do on a jerk bait is it depends on the open water. If I've got water that's got grass, I'm going to get over the top of the grass, and I'm really looking for areas in the grass that are bare. In other words, where I've got little patches that for some reason there's no grass growing. It's bare grass. And in those kind of areas, that's usually where I'll find the largest concentrations of fish. And I like to catch them on a jerk bait. I like to catch them on a, on a crank bait or even throwing a jig in there. Now there's five baits that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. And they'll be doing a lot of different deals. Now I'm not sure we can catch a bait, a, uh, a fish on all five baits. Obviously we can catch them on a jerk bait. Well, we can hook them on a jerk bait. I don't know if we can catch one on a jerk bait or not. <laughs> I've hooked two and lost them both. But, uh, but open water, it's where you want to catch your fish early in the year. Now, there are other baits that work good. I just want to concentrate on five that I really like because these, these baits will really catch them. Hopefully, we can catch a, a fish, you know, maybe catch a fish on two or three of those baits today. Anyway, and a jerk bait is one of them. We're going to try it for a while and see what happens. I have two fish right off the bat. I mean, they're kind of amazing, two fish right off the bat. There's one. Slow that bait down a little bit. It's a pretty good fish. I thought he was a lot smaller than that. Pretty nice fish. Oh, yeah. Let's see if that baby comes unbutton or come in. That's a pretty nice fish right there. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. He didn't know he was caught there for a while, I think. I don't think he knew he was caught. Ah, I've got 10-pound test line on here. One of the things you want to think about if you're going to catch fish on a jerk bait, this is an RC Sticks Lucky Strike Bait. And uh, one of the things you want to think about if you're going to catch fish on a jerk bait is uh, the colder the water, the lighter the line. This water's up about 50 degrees right now. It's 49 when I started this morning. It's a little bit over 50 right now. I have to have some needle nose. You gotta have needle nose, you're gonna fish jerk baits. That's for sure. That's a really nice bass right there. A really, really nice fish. Got two of them out of him. And you're gonna have to carry some extra hooks. So you wanna make sure you get you some good jerk bait hooks that, Bass Pro, it's got great hooks in there, but what's going to happen once you catch quite a few fish, especially unhooking them on the jerk baits, that's a nice bass right there. Look at the belly on that booger, will you look at that? But the lighter, the colder the water, the lighter the line. The colder the water, the lighter the line. That's one of the things to remember on a jerk bait. And uh, when the water's really, really cold, when I first start jerk baiting, I'll be six or eight pound test line. Six is as low as I'll go to. Some of the guys will go to even lower than that, but six or eight pound test line. You normally will get a lot more bites on six pound test line than you will on eight. As the water begins to warm up, you can move to a little bit heavier line. I'd probably be a little bit better off if I had eight on here right now instead of 10. This rod just happened to have 10 on it and that's what I'm throwing on here. But, uh, but the jerk bait, the cool thing you gotta remember about a jerk bait is the majority of the fish you catch are gonna hit when that bait is stopped, when it's just sitting there, not moving at all. So what you wanna do is you're gonna pull that jerk bait down like I've done right here, enter in this open water, stop it, let it sit there. You wanna use a suspended crankbait or jerk bait early in the year. You wanna use a suspended jerk bait early in the year. As the water gets warmer in the summertime, you can use a floating jerk bait that, that floats back up to the top. But early in the year, you wanna use one that suspends. So when you stop that bait, it's gonna stay right there. It's not gonna float back up to the top. And most of the bites are gonna come when it's stopped. Now let me tell you, one of the key things is to let that bait sit there as long as you possibly can. That bass will come up and he'll look at that bait sitting there. You throw that bait out, jerk it down a little bit, give four or five hard jerks, and stop. Let it sit there just about as long as you possibly can stand it. And then let it sit there a little bit more. Give it a jerk or two. Not big jerks with your rod tip. You see what I'm doing right there? Just barely, barely, barely moving that rod tip. Barely, just, just moving it. And then I'm also moving my rod tip back toward it. 
That's one of the key things in catching fish on a jerk bait early in the year is don't let that bait slide in the water. When you jerk it, give it a little jerk, stop it, move your rod tip back toward it so it's sitting there on a loose line. It's not moving, it's just simply sitting there. A lot of times those big bass come up and they're sitting there looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, it's sitting there, and when you move it one more time, that's when they'll grab it. So leave the bait set as long as you possibly can. Sometimes really long pauses is the key things in catching fish on a jerkbait. Let me tell you what I'm looking for on jerkbait fish, and it, you know, what you're looking for depends on the type of lake you've got. If you've got a lake that's got a lot of grass, uh, you can, you're really probably going to be able to find the fish on flats, but what you're looking for is you're looking for areas that where the fish are going to go early in the year before they go back to spawn. So you want to find places where you've got maybe a bay going back in there like that, a bay going back in there like that, a bay going back in there like that, and get out in front of those bays. That's the first place those fish are going to go to. Now if you've got grass, you can get on the big flats. If you just got a bank down there, you might take a bank that's right in between two pockets that go back in if the fish are going to go back in and spawn. Now everybody fishes the points. I mean you've heard that all your life and that's a good thing to do. One of the things to do on a lake you don't know very much about is just go fish points. Go from point to point to point to point to point. But the problem is everybody fishes the points. So fish some of the banks between the points. So you've got a good bay going in, a good bay going in. Fish the bank in between those two bays. And you can get out, and honestly with these jerk baits, you can get out and you're fishing over water that's maybe 20, 30 feet deep, and your bait's going down 7, 8, 9, 10 foot, lighter line, the deeper it's going to go. And you know, those fish are coming up and getting that bait. And you can catch a lot of those big fish in open water in that time of the year. So that's what you're looking for, is you're looking for those type areas where the fish are going to be before they go spawn in a cold open water. I'm going to do actually the same thing with a spinnerbait. I mean, spinnerbait, those are two baits that I'm going to be doing that exact same thing with right there. So uh, this is exactly what we're doing. Speaking of spinnerbaits, let's pick a spinnerbait up and throw it a little bit. We've caught a few fish there. Lost a couple, but we caught a few fish on that, on that bait. Let's pick a spinnerbait up because this is another bait. Early in the year like this, I'm going to use a shad color bait. i got a solid white on here, a shad color bait of some kind. Chartreuse, chartreuse and, or chartreuse, chartreuse and white. And mostly what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a round blade more than I use a willow leaf blade because of the vibration. And I'm going to just slow roll that bait. I want to slow roll the bait over whatever I've got the fish by. If I've got trees, I'm going to slow roll around the trees. If I've got brush piles, slow roll around that. If I've got bridge pilings or rocks, I'm going to slow roll around that. But I'm looking for the same type situation. I'm looking for a place where, I'm looking for a place where the bass are going to be be getting ready to go spawn. The area, it's a pre-pre-spawn area. You've heard of pre-spawn, spawn, and, and, and post-spawn? I'm talking about a pre-pre-spawn area. It's the areas that I'm wanting to find in open water, in cold water situations, is the areas where the fish are going to be before they go into the pre-spawn. Water temperature was 49 degrees, and it's raised up to, well, now I'm back out where it's 49 again, up there when it's protected, I was in. It's a nice fish. You know Jimmy. <laughs> What do you do, Jimmy, when you don't... That's more of a nice fish. That's a big fish. What do you do, Jimmy, when you, when you, uh, when you can't catch them? Man, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. And uh, so what did I do? What do you do, Jimmy? You tie a Jimmy Houston Legend spinnerbait on with round blades. <laughs> Another one. Got that, that bait down a little deeper there. Boy, they're nice fish. I promise you, one thing about fishing early in the year when it's cold like this, you can catch some nice fish when the water's cold. We've got a pretty nice day out here. It's, it's in the 40s, get up in the 60s. Oh man, way to break a rod, Jimmy. Oh, you, look there, caught that one outside the mouth. Look at there, caught him outside the mouth. Almost got him in the eye, but not quite. Ooh, that's a nice one too. Boy, that's a, that's a gorgeous fish right there. Yeah. Whoa, Jimmy, have you figured out something? There he is. Spinner bait. Slow, slow rolling that spinner bait. That's one of the key things in open water. A lot of times it's just a matter of drifting across flats, tr trying to find little variations in the bottom. Oh, that acts like a good fish. Little variations in the bottom that can, can really produce. Oh, he's not a giant, he's just strong. 
<laughs> he's not a giant. He, just, he thinks he's a giant. And a white bass? No, it's a large bass. It's a pretty nice fish. He's hooked outside the mouth a little bit. That made him a little bit stronger. That's two fish that I've caught outside the mouth. Well, spinner bait, you just gonna catch up with the jig. All I'm doing right now is I got out on a big flat. This is one of the things you gotta do. You get out on a big flat and just kinda kinda looking for random fish. I hadn't had a bite on that spinner bait after I got out of those trees. And I caught two in a close together and I couldn't catch any more. So one of the things you want to do if you're going to try to break down open water is fish as many different types of open water as you can find. Uh, and you're looking for really, most of the time, relatively small variances in the bottom. It might be pieces of grass. It might be open spots. It might be brush piles. It might be uh, road beds or something on the bottom. Things on the bottom. And a lot of times you don't ever notice them on your, your electronics until after you caught a fish off of them. So when you catch a fish, pay attention to where you caught it and go over there and look at that spot where that fish bit and see if you got a, some grass over there, a brush pile, or maybe a, a bridge, or it could be all kinds of things, you know. What holds fish in open water, it's the same thing that holds fish up against the bank that you can see. Is it important on a spinner bait, if you, when you're using tandem blades like most of us use nowadays, I use a lot of single spins myself. I, take a lot of the baits and actually cut the inside blade off. But is it important if you have the gold blade or the nickel blade out on the end? Which is it? Which is better, gold blade or nickel blade out on the end? Well, to be totally honest with you, it probably doesn't make much difference at all. On this particular bait right here, which I've been catching quite a few fish on today, I've got the nickel out on the end and the gold on the inside. Probably makes no difference at all. Historically, I've always put the gold on the end, the little nickel, nickel kicker blade on the inside. What's more important is the shape of the blades and the size of the blades. You gotta remember in spinnerbait fishing that round blades create a lot more vibration. So if you want a lot of vibration, you want a lot of vibration, you wanna go with round blades. You throw a round blade, you can notice your, your thump, 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 thump right on the end of your rod tip, and that's exactly what you want. The bigger the blade, the more thump you're gonna get. So if you're trying to really fish and get a lot of thump, a lot of vibration, you're trying to get fish to move a long way to come and get your bait, you want to use a bigger blade. Earlier in the year when I'm catching big fish, I like big blades. Late in the year in the fall, I like to use big blades when I'm fishing around rocks and riprap and things like that. Something that creates a lot of vibration. In muddy water, I like to use round blades. Something that causes a lot of vibration. In the middle of the year, in the summertime, when the shad are spawning, then you can go to your long, slender willow leaf blades that provide a lot of flash, but not very much vibration. As far as the situation on the gold and nickel, probably makes not much difference at all. But uh, the main thing is just get something that's comfortable to you, something that you got some real confidence in. But if you're looking for vibration, which to be honest with you, I'm looking for vibration more than I am anything else in the spinnerbait. Vibration is important, very, very important. And the size of the blade, the bigger the blade, generally, the bigger the bass. Good luck out there with your spinnerbaits. Doesn't really matter the color of the blades. What I'm looking for when I've got a jig on, and I've just got a half ounce Lucky Strike jig on there now, and I usually put some sort of a creature bait on it or a crawl bait on it uh, in the cold water like this. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for little small areas that are around trees or rocks or things that are different from the surrounding deals. And what I've got right here, this is almost a, uh, probably like a little field or something right in the middle of a bunch of trees. And uh, I'm just going to fish the edges of that. I'm going to go down through the edges and I'm going to keep my eyes on my locators and try to find a little point or some grass. I might see something out there in my pan optic out in front of the boat to throw at. But keep some areas out there where I can find something to throw at around wood cover or rocks or underwater structure or an underwater change in the bottom. That's what I'm looking for in the open water when I'm fishing a jig. It's an exactly really good bait to get because you get down on the bottom, you can fish deep, you can fish any depth you want. And when the water's cold, and the fish are sluggish, the jig is obviously a great thing to get them. Plus the jig catch really big fish. I mean, you catch big fish on the jig, absolutely no doubt about that. But these are the type of things that I'm looking for when I'm fishing a jig. I'm not necessarily in the cold water with a jig looking for fish that are going, are going to go into spawn or staging in any way. I'm going to look for fish that's, that, well, I'm going to look for fish that's there and maybe they've been there a while and I can go back a week or 10 days and those fish will still be in those areas. That's the kind of, kind of areas I'm looking for. And uh, we're going to fish some of these little areas like this if we can catch one or two on a jig. 
Might find a little point, might find a, a big piece of brush down there or a log laying on the bottom that we might see with our live scope that we can throw around and catch a fish. I might be able to just catch them on the edges. If you'll notice that most of the time when I'm looking for fish, I'm looking around the edges of something, the edges of grass, the edges of trees, the edges of points. He's hung up. He's still on. He's, st he's still on there. I got him. <laughs> this was right on the edge. That fish is right on the edge. Well, that's like a big fish. He is a big fish. I don't know how damaged my line is. Oh, a good fish. That's the kind of fish you expect to catch right there on a jig. I'm going to get him. <laughs> my line got hung up down there, so it's kind of damaged a little bit, I believe. Oh, that is it right there. That is it. Half ounce. Lucky strike jig. Looky there. That fish is over five pounds, well over five pounds. Kind of fish you catch this time of the year. Cold open water. It was around that tree on the inside edge of this field. Beautiful, beautiful fish. <laughs> he was in another tree down there that I couldn't see. I could see some extra stuff there on the on my live scope. But he was he was in a tree, so when I set the hook, oh my goodness. <laughs> Throw it out there, pick your backlash out, and set the hook. That's the name of the game, isn't it? <laughs> Throw it out there, pick your backlash out, and set the hook. Oh my goodness. It's a nice one too. Dang right he's a nice one. <laughs> Dang right he's a nice one. Look at that booger bear, will you? Golly. Oh, Jimmy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that fish. Oh my goodness. Ah. What I'm looking for with a jig obviously is brush on the bottom and differences in the bottom contour in open water. That is a giant fish right there. Look at that fish. That's a giant. That's a six or seven pound bass right there. That is a beauty. You talk about a healthy wintertime bass. That's a healthy wintertime bass right there. Now that fish was was out on a point, out on a point around some brush. All right, here's another bait. <laughs> here's another bait that is an incredibly great open water bait for the cold water, and that's the old umbrella rig. This bait is so good, as a matter of fact, that you cannot use this bait. You cannot use this bait in BASS or Major League Fishing or FLW at the top level. You can use it in some of their lower lower level tournaments. You cannot use it in their top level tournaments. That's just how dynamite this bait is. When they are biting this bait, when they're on this bait, it's almost, almost impossible to, to beat. I mean, it's just almost impossible to beat. You just almost cannot catch them as well on anything else as you can this bait right here. It's just absolutely dynamite. And on this bait, on this bait, it's just a matter, of, there's a lot of different ways to fish it. But again, if you're gonna get in the open water, one of the best things is finding schools of shad. If you've got a lake, it's got an awful lot of shad in it. Find the schools of shad, find them with your locator, and go around and, and, and fish around on top of and underneath those shad. Now, if you've got a good pan optics that can look out in front of the boat, you can see those shad, you can see where the fish are on top or, or below that thing, and, uh, and you'll be able to catch a lot of really, really big fish this way. But it's just a dynamite way to catch really, really big fish. Now, I'm living pretty dangerously right here because I'm in these trees. There's a lot of trees that you can't see. It's not a very good bait at all to throw around the trees. Okay, here's the other thing I use in open water without a doubt is a deep diving crankbait. This is an American original deep smoothie. Sometimes you even want to use something that go deeper than this. This is a bait that you can cover a lot of open water with and uh, I spend a lot of time on the points with it. I spend a lot of time uh, just going down going down banks that are in between areas where the fish might be moving in to spawn. If I've got grass, I'm gonna fish the bait over the top of the grass. It depends on the type of lake. Uh, early in the year, uh, it lakes like 10 killer. You get on a lot of good big chunk rock banks where you got them rocks about this big and you can take these deep diving crankbaits and, and, uh, and get out and try to catch fish on those in open water. But uh, one of the things about, one of the things about a crankbait is that if you're kind of limited by how deep it'll go. Now sometimes you can use that to your advantage because you can 
you can get in a place where you got, say, grass or something that's seven or eight feet deep, and fish a crankbait that'll go down five foot deep, and it doesn't ever get in the grass, but stays over on top of the grass. So it can use it to your advantage. But one of the things about a crankbait in trying to locate fish in open water is the fact that you can cut to cover a lot of water with it. We're going to do that here for the next hour or so. We'll just cover a lot of water and see if we can catch a, a fish or two on this crankbait. It's, uh, it's a good thing, good way to catch them. It's uh, probably of the five baits we've talked about today. It's probably about one of the, I don't know if it's, it's the number three or number four or number five. It, you know, I guess it depends on the day. Some days it might be number one. Uh, you're not ever going to catch them very often on all five baits I've talked about today. And there's other baits that are, there's other baits that are really good too, to think about in in fishing open water like we're fishing. Uh, rattle baits are good. Things like a big hail mary. Uh, chatter baits are good to use in open water. There's a lot of type baits you can use in open water. These five right here. If you'll try these five right here when you're fishing open water type areas, and when the water's cold. Water like we've got it right now, down to, it's actually down to 48 degrees. It got up to 51 today, but as that sun has gotten down closer to the, to, the, uh, to the horizon, water's already started cooling off. It's that time of the year when the nights are going to be cold. It's going to be down in the 30s tonight, even though it was a beautiful, beautiful day. And uh, we're going to just run some of this open water with this deep driving crankbait. I'm out in 19 or 20 foot of water right now. And I'm just going to just run this open water and see if I can't run into some fish. And that's all you're trying to do with a crankbait. You're just trying to run into some fish out here. You might find a, a little area that has got a tree, one tree standing out there all by itself uh, no, that you can't see except with your locators. You might find an area that's got a piece of grass sticking up. There's all kinds of things that could be down there. It could be a bridge culvert, could run into an old road bed. You know, you just want to pay attention to all that. But one of the things you're doing in open water with a crankbait is you are covering a lot of water. Okay, guys and girls, the key thing about open, cold water is don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of the open, cold water. I picked out five good techniques and five good lures to catch them. There are more. These are not the only things you can do it on. And, uh, and really, we caught them on three of the five. We caught them on everything but my American Original Deep Smoothie, which I catch a jillion fish on. And of all things, an Alabama rig, an umbrella rig, that's usually a great, great bait for cold open water. And those are the two baits that did not perform today. Spinner bait we caught fish on. Oh, that's grass. Spinner bait we caught fish on. That's a lot of grass. Spinner bait we caught fish on. Uh, crank now jerk bait we caught fish on and a jig. Without a doubt, you know, if you'd have been out here with me today and we had a we had a, we'd, we was doing this, once we got to catch them as good as we caught them on a jig, that's a technique we'd have used for today. And if we was out here trying to catch fish in a tournament, going to come out tomorrow or the next day or a couple of days from now and try to fish a tournament, we'd probably come out here and really concentrate on that jig. But that's the reason you want to have four or five different techniques to break down open water, four or five different lures, is to find out which one works the best. And it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to pick out five lures or six lures and catch them on every single one. Usually you're going to catch them on maybe only one or two, but the key is to, to hit those different type areas that we talked about today, uh, looking for areas where the fish are going to spawn, looking for areas that you've got breaks in the bottom, different things in the bottom that you can that fish can be around, and looking for openings in the grass. We talked about a lot of different things, probably a whole lot more than probably a whole lot more than uh, than five techniques today, but. Uh, but those things, those five baits right there, and if you go and look the, the way that we've been looking today, in the course of the day, you're going to find out and you're going to figure out some fish. And once you figure them out, obviously you just duplicate that. But the key deal is early in the year when the water's cold, the fish are not going to be up in too much shallow water. Spinnerbait's a pretty good choice for today too, huh? Ha, 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 ha. Spinnerbait is a... Pretty good choice for today as well. Spinnerbait's caught a big fish or two, and it's caught some, some smaller ones also. That's not a bad fish. That's a 14 or 15 inch fish. But uh, <laughs> you notice that I just laid the crankbait down, picked it up, and hadn't made many throws with the spinnerbait. The spinnerbait is definitely, definitely a good choice. When the fish are not 
up in that shallow water, and they're just not up in that shallow water yet. They're just not there. The water's too cold. They're going to be in the open water, and there are going to be big ones out there. Some of the biggest fish in the lake, a lot of those giant fish will never ever move to very shallow water. They'll spawn a lot deeper than most of the fish. So don't be afraid to fish the open water. Get out there and have you some fun. Try these different baits. Once you figure it out, bingo, you're in business. See you later, guys and girls.